This is question two, 2019, level three, um, electricity exam. All right. Question two, what do we got? Inductive loops are also used to sense presence of cars. Inductive loops are wire coils embedded in the surface of roads and are powered by AC supply, known voltage and frequency. Um, what do we got? One particular inductive loop has four ohms resistance powered by 24 volt RMS. It's average voltage-ish kind of root mean squared voltage really and 120 hertz AC power supply. Um, the loop is 1.6 by 6 meters rectangular in shape. There it is, there's a the shape there. Um, calculate the peak voltage of the supply. Um, so in your formula sheet, we have, where is it, Vmax equals root two VRMS. Um, so we're just gonna chuck that in. So we're gonna go Vmax is equal to VRMS root two. I like it. RMS first. Um, so we're just going to do that on the calculator and we get 33.94 volts. 33.94 volts and I just like putting PP if it's peak to peak. Um, ah, nice stuff. I'll just get rid of that. Anyway. Um, oh shit, and I should really Vmax, I'll do it right down here, equals, we're going to round that up to 34.9. 33, I should say, point nine, ah, damn it, point 0.9 volts. That should be point 0.9. Chisel that in. Because um, it's going to do 3SF. The strength of the magnetic field in the loop is 0 0.0413 teslas. Man, that's high. Calculate the magnetic, maximum magnetic flux in each of the three coils of the wire in the inductive loop. Right. So, in our formula sheet, I'll just, there's, well, Magnetic flux is just the magnetic field times the area, which is just going to be 0 0.0413 um, in each of the three coils of wire. So I assume we're not timesing, it's just in one coil. So it's just going to be times by the area, which is just going to be base times height. So it's going to be 1.6 times 0 0.6, um, and that should equal Hope you can see that there, 0 0.0396. So I'll just write 0 0.0396. Uh, yeah, 6 because it's going to running down. Um, the units for these are Webers, which is a really, really uncommon unit. Um, Tesla's pretty common. You've probably heard of the car company Tesla, obviously. Um, but Webers is a very unique unit. Um, I always forget who the guy is, but he is some dude who did something in physics. They always are. Right, when a car drives over the inductive loop, the steel's body and the engine interacts with the magnetic field of the inductive loop. The overall effect of the interaction is to reduce the inductance of the loop. To explain the decreased inductance would have on the current in the circuit. Um, does it have any forms of resistance? The wire's got forms of resistance. Um, it's 120 hertz power supply. Um, right, so. We'll just write the formula XL. So this is the reactance because it's an AC circuit. It's essentially an AC circuit with a resistor and inductor. Um, XL equals omega L, um, which basically means two ooh, no, check, two pi F times L. So what are we going to do? We're decreasing um, decreasing the inductance, which is going to then decrease the reactance which is just essentially fancy resistance, which will decrease the like the, the total impedance of the whole circuit, so more current should start flowing. Um, and I'll just pause it and try and write it slightly more succinctly if I can. Right, so I've said reducing the inductance will induce the reactance. I don't think I spelled that wrong, reactance. That's decreasing the total impedance from uh, voltage equals the current times the impedance. Um, decreased impedance, I didn't spell that right either, dance, with the same voltage will increase the current. Um, so I had a look at like the marking schedule and I'm yabbering on about when they say linking changing magnetic flux with induced voltage and current, but if you read the question it says explain the decreased inductance we must have on the current in this situation. Normally when you put iron or something ferromagnetic uh, or anything conductive, anything really can well, anything ferromagnetic inside an inductive loop tends to increase the inductance. 
Um, but if the iron's outside the magnetic loop, it's, uh, and it's out, outside the loop, it tends to get a little more complicated than that because um, now you have lots of different like magnetic fields interacting. So I'll just leave it at that for now. Um, you can probably Google what happens if you have like large metal objects outside of inductor loops. Right, um, what do we got? The new inductance is five times 10 to the negative three Henry's. Determine the RMS um, current in the circuit. Right. So what now we're going to do is we're going to find the reactance of the inductor. XL is equal to 2 pi F times the inductance. So now we've got a new inductance of that, and we've still got the same frequency, which is just, what is it, 120 hertz. So it is. So we're going to go, this is going to be equal to 2 pi times 120 times 5, what is it, times 10 to the negative 3. Because um, what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and find the total impedance. Um, and then from there we'll just divide by the voltage and it'll give us the total. So total impedance is like the big, is the, all the fancy resistances add together. So regular resistance, reactance, which is like alternating resistance that comes with capacitors and inductors. Find the total impedance of the circuit and then just get the voltage divided by the impedance that'll give us the current. Um, so now this should equal, we've got 3.769 ohms, because um, it's a resistance. And now we know that if you draw a phasor diagram, um, what is it, uh, inductors lead resistance. So here's a phasor diagram. Here's was it, XL, there's a resistance. This is uh, the inductor leads the resistance by 90 degrees. In other words, they're just 90 degrees out of phase. So we have total impedance, and the symbol is Z is equal to the square root, because it's just Pythagoras, because we're going to try and add these two vectors together to find that vector there, which is the sum of those two vectors. So it's going to be XL squared plus R squared. Um, and that is just going to be equal to square root 3.6. 679 squared plus and it's a 4 ohm resistor because it says over here or well, the resistance of the loops 4 ohms um, so we're going to plus 4 squared um, and that equals we get 5.49 I hope you can see that so 5.4959 ohms it's the total impedance of the circuit and now it's just V equals IZ, that's even in your formula sheet. In other words, IRMS is equal to VRMS over impedance. That should be Z. I did that Z really weirdly for some reason. So this is going to be, what is it, 24 divided by 5.4959, um, and that equals. 4.366 amps. So let's get 4.366 amps. So in other words, I R M S equals 4.37 amps. There we go.